Welcome back to our first Build with Rust project, which was the Lines of Code counter. Last time we finished part one, which featured mainly the configuration. And this time we want to finish everything out. The idea was to build a Lines of Code counter, which works on the command line and has three input flags. The first one is dash F, where the user can provide a comma separated list of files that he wants the lines of code to be counted. The second one is a combination of dash D and dash E, where the user provides a comma separated list of directories alongside some file endings. So our algorithm will search through those directories recursively, find files that have those file extensions, and then count the lines of code of those files. And of course, you can mix and match. You can provide two or three files, for example, with the dash F flag, and then additionally provide some directory and file endings. In order to make our program work, we need to interface with the command line. So we use all these arguments and funnel them into our constructor for the configuration. And the configuration will then parse the arguments, verify that all the files that were provided with the dash F flag actually exist. And then it will find all the files that were um, provided with the dash D flag with the directory and the extensions, which will leave us in the end with a vector of all the file names as strings. All the other vectors, the directories and the file extensions are just temporary. What we need are the file names. So now let's get to the second part of this tutorial, which is we want to do the actual line of code counting. And therefore we have two steps. We need to read each file to a vector of strings, which will be our lines. And then we have to check for each line whether it is a line of code. So let me do the reading to a file first. We will have a function called readFile. And what we're going to take in is the file name. And this can be a string slice. And of course, reading a file can fail in various ways. For example, we might not have access to read it or the file might already be opened by another program, thus we cannot open it, or whatever other problems can occur. So we cannot directly return a vector of string, but we need to return a result, which will either have a vector of string, in case everything went fine, or it will have some error. In this case, I don't really care what the error is, why we couldn't open the file, because in the end we're just going to skip this file then. So I'll have the unit type in here as an error. Then what we want to do is we want to use the file colon colon open. And now what we want to do is we want to use the built-in file interfacing of Rust, which is in stdfs file. And we will use open here. And what open takes is just a string slice with the path. And in this case, we can provide the file name. However, this can fail. Therefore, we'll do if let OK. And if we are OK, we want to have a file handle. So in case the file open returns an OK result, we will go into this scope. And else, we will go into the error scope. Therefore, we will just return the unit type as error here. Now let's care for the happy path. In order to read a file, we need a reader. And one of the typical ways you would do this is a buffered reader. So let reader is equal to buff reader. And we will use the constructor for the buffered reader and it expects a file handle, which we already have. So in this way, we will cre create a buffered file reader. And what we would then like to return is a vector of string where each element in the vector will represent one line. 
So we'll return an OK, which wraps all the strings stored in the vector. So how do you get all these strings? We will take the reader and do dot lines, and then we'll map those. Um, because each line that you get from lines is also a result containing either a string or an error, because reading a line can fail. Now, I don't know all the ways reading a line can fail, but I know what to do with it. So I will just take this line and run a match on it. In case we get an OK, we will just return this line. And in case we get an error, I don't even care which one, we will replace this line by an empty string. Okay, so this is just my decision. And in the end, uh, because we are still at a state of an iterator, we need to collect this into the vector. And in order to make Rust recognize this lines functionality, we also need to include the buff read, so buffered read, not only the buffered reader. Okay, let's just format this to make it a bit nicer. So what happens here? We try to open the file. If that succeeds, we will create a buffered reader. Then we will return wrapped in an OK all the lines that we get from the reader, which are mapped through basically a matcher whether the read was OK. Then we'll just take this line. If it was not OK, we replace with an empty string. And in the end, we'll collect. We don't need to specify how we want to collect it or into what, because the signature of the function already tells us that it's going to be a vector of strings. So now let's use this config. Therefore, we can remove the underscore that we have had last time. So we say for file in config.file names. We first need to get the content. So let file content is equal to read file, our new function. And we'll take in the file. And now what happens if we cannot open the file? Well, basically, you decide whether you want to panic out here or whether you want to handle this error. I just chose the quick path here, which is I'm just going to error out. And we'll say, we'll format the text here. Could not read file. And we'll put the file name in. Reason for panicking out in this case is that if you want to get an impression of how many lines of code you have, but let's say out of the 10 files, three could not even be read, uh, I'd rather give no result back to the user than giving a wrong result. And of course, we don't need the braces here. And we need to borrow here. So this is the first part. The next part will be checking if it is a line of code. So this will give us our lines already. What we need now is a function that decides whether a string slice, a line, is actually a line of code. And I'll call this function is code line. We'll take in a line, which is a string slice, and we'll return a bool. True if it is a line of code, false if it's not. The first thing I want to do is I want to trim off the white space, because white space doesn't really have any significance in terms of whether there is code or not. And the way you can do this is with the trim function, which will just return another string slice. So you can think of it as a string view or a view of your original string. So there's no copying being done. And basically this will make, for example, out of this line of code, it will just cut all the white space in front, cut all the white space in the back if there was any. And we can now decide easier whether this is a line of code. So 
whatever your rules are for it is a line of code or it is not a line of code i mean it's really up to you to decide in this case i decided to keep it simple again i'll say a line of code has to have at least four characters so i'll say line dot length is smaller than four or if the line is a comment line dot starts with and we'll have the double slash comment then i will return false and otherwise i will return true now i know that there is the other type of comment right where you start with a slash and an asterisk and end it again and you could have this on multiple lines and you could have it only of part of a line i think this complicates this code a lot and we're not trying to build a production quality lines of code counter here we're trying to get more familiar with rust and i think implementing this kind of functionality would not really contribute a lot to getting familiar with rust but if you like to have this functionality or if you would like to challenge yourself go ahead and do so i'll keep it as simple as we have here so for the file content that we now have we need to specify whether we have a line of code or not so we'll have let line of code is equal to we'll take the file content which is not a single line it's a vector of strings so these are all the lines in the file i'll get an iterator and what i would now do is i filter over it so filter is a concept that comes from functional programming where you'll say i'll take a collection of some sorts and then i'll have a function which will either return true or false for each element in this collection and whenever false is returned i will filter that element out of the collection so what you get back is typically a collection or the same kind of collection that you had initially with only some of the elements remaining so what we'll do is call filter here and the function to decide whether it's a line of code or not will take a lambda function so we'll take in the line and of course we'll decide via is code line what we just wrote so if we were to do it like this we would of course get an iterator back and we could do something like collect and in the end we'd have a vector of strings uh, or string references in this case because what filter will do is not actually build a new collection but it will reuse the old one and just give you a kind of a masking of all the elements that are still in your filtered collection However, we're not really interested in having a reference to all of the lines of code. In the end, what we're interested in is just knowing how many of it there are. So we want an integer here. And the way we do this is instead of collect, we'll call count on the iterator, which will intuitively enough give us the number of filtered elements that we still have, meaning this loc variable gives us the number or the yeah the number of lines of code that we had in this file and of course now we need to sum those all up um, i'll call that total loc is equal to zero and let's start with a use size variable because why not um, because count will give us a use size as well and then it'll be easier to work with this so we'll add that up and for convenience for the user uh, or maybe he's interested in that we will just print how many lines of code we had in this particular file and we are already done with this really nice um, let's put this comment up top where it belongs or maybe put it in here 
So all that's left to do now is print the lines of code to the terminal. Again, I'll keep it simple, but you do you. Print line LC overall. Total LOC. Perfect. And that should be it already. Let's try. Cargo run. Again, double dash to forward any flags to our program. And in this case, we'll just start with, let's say, this main file. So we'll have from here, we'll go to source, we'll go to main.rs, and I need to spell that correctly. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we've got 30 lines of code in here by our definition of what a line of code is. And looking at the fact that this file has 54 lines, some of it is comments, some of it is white space, some of it are very short lines. I think 30 is about realistic, might be correct. Huh? Let's now try that on multiple files. So source and we'll do config.rs as well. And that seems to be correct. Config.rs is a bit larger. Now let's see if we get the same results doing it with the dash D flag. So the directory that we want to have is .src and the file ending is equal to rs. Perfect, same result. Let's check some wrong file ending, cpp, and we got zero lines of code overall. Really nice, so I think we've reached the end of this very small project, beginner project. I hope you could take away some learnings here. Uh, I think the main work was actually in writing this configuration and this is also where we used a lot of functional programming as well. And the second video is mainly kind of to wrap things up. We saw that there's not a lot of different things. Maybe you learned how to interface with a file which is pretty straightforward if you've ever done that in another language. And as I said, expand on this is code line the way you want to. Uh, I'm not gonna bother too much with that. So thank you for joining in. If you learned something, like the video, maybe consider subscribing. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Green Tea Coding video.